Hey everybody, Chris here from It's Mead Made, and today I have one question. Is the Ender 3 still a great starter 3D printer for beginners? Or is it, as some would claim, a dinosaur that's gone extinct, and it's just overshadowed by these newer, shinier models out there? Heated doesn't even begin to describe the discussions around this topic, and if you're a beginner trying to decide if an Ender is right for you, then your head might be just spinning. So in this video, I am going to make a case as of why I think the Ender is still a strong contender as a starter 3D printer for beginners, and why I at least keep one in my workshop. I've been 3D printing since 2014, and over the years, I have honestly experimented with a variety of machines. And in 2019 is when I bought my first Ender 3. But it wasn't until the 2020 global situation that it proved to be the most reliable workhorse 3D printer that it had been touted to be. Because I had a friend whose wife was a nurse, and with a shortage of PPE supplies, I began 3D printing parts for face shields and for mask expanders. The demand was honestly so high I decided to get a second Ender 3 to keep up. Those two little Ender 3s allowed me to reliably supply an entire ICU with protective gear in those first days. That experience alone had me sold on the Ender. In fact, it was the only printers that I was using for a while. So why do I even tell you this? Because I want you to know that I'm talking from a place of experience. And while at this point I'm sure the haters out there are going to come out and say that I'm biased or I've sold out or I'm a fanboy or honestly whatever, I believe my years of experience with these machines puts me in a position where I can also give you reasons why the Ender 3 might not be for you. So the real question is, has the Ender 3 evolved enough to stay relevant as a beginner-friendly 3D printer? Or are there just better options out there for newbies? Let's take a look at the current models, go through the pros and cons, and see if you think the Ender 3 is a good option for you. So here's a fun fact for you, I still have my original Ender 3 machine in my setup. Because not only did it perform well back in the crisis of 2020, but it's a part of the workhorse crew of 3D printers that I used to 3D print all of my multi-boards in my new workshop. Now the Ender 3 has been touted as the best 3D printer for beginners and hobbyists since it was first introduced in 2018. But in the recent years, there has been a lot of bashing of the Ender 3 series as a good beginner printer. So how far has this Ender 3 come? So I feel like I'm in a unique position to share my experience with the original models versus the current models since I only owned the original Ender 3 series up until 2023 when I upgraded to the current V3 series. So let's take a look now of the original Ender 3 series compared to the newest series, especially on the features that matter most for beginners. So we can compare apples to apples or I guess Enders to Enders. So let's jump over to the workshop where we can compare our original Ender 3s with the new V3 series. All right, so I have all of my Enders that I have today, which is my Ender 3 Pro, my original. Then I have the newer V3 series. I've got the Ender 3 KE and I've got the Ender 3 Plus. And just as a disclaimer, I have purchased both of these printers with my own money with the exception of this Ender 3 V3 Plus. Creality was kind enough to send this to me to let me just try it out. So now that we got that out of the way, let's go ahead and dive into some of the biggest beginner-friendly features worth mentioning. Now, with the original Enders over here, you had to do a lot of things manually in order to just start printing. And honestly, as a beginner, these were some of the most frustrating things that were keeping you from just hitting print because you had to level your bed, you had to do your calibrations, sometimes you had to do belt tensioning, and these were all hurdles. But the new Ender 3s, those are all things of the past, because now you've got automatic bed leveling, there's automatic calibrations that can happen, and built-in belt tensioning, and these are some huge improvements to get you printing fast. 
When it comes to the quality, the old Enders could produce beautiful 3D prints, but the speed just wasn't their strong suit. And my longest 3D print to date was on this machine right here. It took a total of nine days. I had the quality set to its highest and it was the full size of the build volume. But today, if I printed that same model on one of these, it would only take about a day or two on these new V3 series. The new printers are significantly faster, and you're not spending days on prints anymore. I mean, they are really fast. And along those same lines, the hot end of the original Ender, it just didn't get as hot as these new V3s did because now beginners can experiment with different types of specialty filaments that weren't possible with the original. And they've moved away from the Bowden tube extruders, which is so nice because with the direct drives, it makes filament changes a lot easier and allowing you to have more precise extrusions for those more specialty filaments. The build volumes on at least the regular V3 is pretty comparable. But if you need something bigger, that's where this V3 Plus really shines with a 300 by 300 millimeter build plate. A few more things that have changed that's a real game changer, especially for beginners. Assembly is way easier now. It used to take me over an hour to assemble an ender, but now these took me about 15 minutes to get together. You just got to attach the gantry and then connect some wires and then you're good to go. It even runs through a calibration process right when you turn it on, so you can be printing your first model within 30 minutes of opening the box. The last thing is the new touchscreens on the Ender 3 V3s. They are really nice. No more blue screen click wheel, and SD cards are also a thing of the past now. Now these have wireless printing. So you can connect it to your computer through your Wi-Fi network, and you can even get your phone and download the mobile app to be able to start prints and also remotely check to see what the status of your prints are. So we've talked about all the features that have changed from the Ender 3 to the V3s. Now let's talk about some of the pros and cons as it pertains to a user standpoint. By no means this is an exhaustive list, it's just things to kind of get you thinking about. Now, let's go ahead and talk about the pros. Now, if you like to tinker and learn about how your machine works, you can still get original Ender 3s. Modifications can be made to improve the functionality of your printers, and honestly, it can be really fun. Although, some of the newer models on the Ender V3 series, there's not a lot of things you can mod like you can on an original. So, this could be either a pro or a con depending on how you look at it because the original Enders are notorious for being hands-on learning machines. The knowledge you can gain from them can easily be transferred to other machines. But the great thing is, is these are truly budget-friendly with a low barrier to entry for hobbyists. It's a good way to see if you like the hobby or not before you completely dive into it. I mean, there are so many Ender 3s out there, you can find them used on Craigslist, eBay, Facebook Marketplace. I mean, it's not hard to find a used one to just kind of see if you like it. And speaking of so many of these things out there, the community and the resources that are out there are so vast. You will always be able to find answers and solutions to your problems easily. All right, so we have talked about all of the pros when it comes to these machines. Let's talk about some of the cons. Now, the big one that a lot of people are looking for these days are multicolor prints. And if that's what you're looking for, you might want to look at other options. While you can do multicolor prints on an Ender, it's a lot harder of a process and you're more limited than other machines. Because those other machines are specifically designed for that purpose. Now, when I was doing my research about what other people are saying about the V3 series, one thing that kept coming up is endless frustrations when it comes to the print quality of their printers. And I, I actually had these frustrations too. And it was only when I was using the Creality Print software. And especially when I was using supports. But all of that went away when I switched over to Cura and using Orca Slicer. I'm just not a big fan of the Creality Print Slicer. It has some really good features in it, like being able to monitor my prints, but when it comes to the actual slicing of the models, I just prefer Cura and Orca. 
Now the last con is the reality customer support. It is just lacking, and some have even said that it's just non-existent. And this has been an ongoing issue for a long time. I have personally had these issues in the past, like trying to get responses from them. But I'm hoping this might change in the future, but right now, everybody says it's just not that great, and my personal experience kind of agrees with that. So, who would I recommend the Ender 3 to? Usually my first question is, what's your budget? And if the answer is, I'm on a limited budget, or I don't know, but I just don't want to spend a lot of money to get into the hobby, usually my first response is always an Ender 3. In my personal opinion, it's always been a reliable printer in my workshop. The quality you can get for the cost of the machine is well worth it to me. I think the Ender 3 series remains a fantastic option for beginners and hobbyists alike. I still think the Ender 3 is still a good hands-on, budget-friendly machine that has evolved with new features to keep up with the industry. Whether you're just starting out or you're a seasoned maker, I think the Ender 3 provides a solid foundation for learning, tinkering, and just creating. With its strong community, its impressive upgrade options, I believe it continues to hold a place in my top choice for anyone interested in a 3D printer. So, the big question is, is the Ender 3 right for you? Well, maybe it is. But, are there better options out there? I'd say maybe yes to that too. It really depends on what you're wanting to do with your printer. If you're a general hobbyist just looking to 3D print some parts, random widgets, this is a good, affordable option for you. But here's the thing. Take a step back and think about what you really want to do. Look at the features that are important to you and see if the Ender 3 is a good fit. But one thing I would definitely say is don't listen to the haters out there. I've noticed there are some really biased people against Creality for some reason. My advice is just stop focusing on the brands and zero in on the features that you want. That's really the best way to figure out what is going to work best for you. Because remember, it's not about what's popular and what everybody else is using. It's about finding the printer that fits your needs, your budget, and your goals. So take your time, do the research, and choose the printer that's going to help you bring all of your ideas to life. So I hope this video has helped you decide whether the Ender 3 is right for you or not right for you. But other than that, I wish you a great day, and I'll go ahead and see you in this video over here.